Hello and welcome everyone. My name is Thomas Seidel and as you are hopefully aware, I'm going to talk about um, the search API in Drupal 8 today. Um, this uh, will be a live demo of the current state of the search API in Drupal 8. Um, just a quick overview before. Um, who has already used the search API in Drupal 7? Uh, who hasn't used it in Drupal 7? A lot of undecided people here, but good to know. Um, so if you've used it in Drupal 7 already, then the, um, a lot of this will seem uh, familiar. There have only been slight um, changes uh, user-facing-wise, but uh, a lot of um, new stuff under the hood and uh, a lot more is still in development. Um, but before I begin with the demo, a quick overview of the search API in general. It was created in 2010 for Drupal 7 um, based on some of the suggestions floating around regarding core search for Drupal 8. So there were a lot of ideas about um, being more flexible in the kind of data you ha can search, in the kind of um, backend you can use for searching, and all of that. And really I tried to um, come up with a ground, uh, with a completely new um, implementation of search not based on core search, that would incorporate as many of these features and functionalities as possible. So with the search by it's possible to index different kinds of data with different search engines and present this uh, to the user with different types of user interface. Um, basic architecture, but uh, yeah, if, this, the, um, if most of you have used it in triple seven already, this is familiar. There's a search index which holds the generic information about what is being indexed, the type of content, um, the type of data really, the fields, um, et cetera. And then there's the search server, which incorporates all the backend specific information. So whether it uses the database or the or Apache Solar or something for indexing. And uh, yeah, it just really takes care of the actual process of indexing and searching. And this looks um, uh, like this in the um, visually. So just one server. Every index has a single server, but um, there can be multiple server uh, indexes per server. And all the other modules then just use the indexes and don't generally care about the backend. So almost everything you do is backend independent and can be reused no matter what backend you're um, ending up using, which can also be different, for example, on um, test, uh, test or li and live servers, to uh, make things easier. And yeah, so with this um, short introduction out of the way, let's start right away with the demo. Um, is this large enough for everyone to see? Okay, I guess so. So. Um, We'll just, as usually, go to the exam page and there enable the search API and database search modules. As you see, there's also now a database search defaults module, uh, which um, was implemented a few months ago, which allows you to easily um, have a full setup with index server and a view available without having to really um, uh, configure all this stuff by yourself. And also important uh, while this is loading is that uh, when you're using search API, you almost always should disable the search module from core because that's not needed and will just uh, take away unnecessary um, resources with Gibbs enabled. So um, search API configuration page looks like this. And here you can, as said, add service and indexes. And we first add a server. In our example, just a database server. Um, the description is optional and just displayed in the admin UI and you can again um, select the minimum word length, the index, but nothing really, um, but really nothing else for a database backend, which is very simple. And then once you have this backend, the server, 
um, you can add an index to the server. And here is the, uh, one of the larger changes uh, in Drupal 8, because now you, can, you don't have just a node index as previously. You can actually index any, kind, any number of um, different item types in the same index. So you can uh, index content, but then also index com comments and taxonomy terms, and all of this will be found in a single search, but you can also, of course, then also create searches for just one or several of these. And also, as in the latest versions of, triple of the Drupal 7 module, you can um, change the uh, bundles that will be indexed for each of these data sources. So for nodes, you can just uh, index articles or basic pages, or and for taxonomy terms, the same with the uh, um, vocabularies. And then you just um, uh, select the server you want to use. And then there are just the advanced options, and one of these index items immediately I'll shortly um, discuss, because um, that's a, a rather um, advanced uh, option really, but a very important one. So what this does is, um, if it's enabled, then as soon as a node or taxonomy term or comment gets edited or added, it will right away be indexed. So that searches will right away return it. Um, the advantages of this is, of course, that there is no stale data in your searches. So once something changes, then the search will, ref will reflect this. And which is especially important if you use the index data for any security checks. So if you, if you have a search view and are just um, showing published content, for example, which is, of course, a very, um, very uh, common thing to do, then if you don't have this option enabled and you unpublish a node, it will still show up in the search results, which can, of course, um, lead to information leaks. So this is one uh, large concern which you should keep in mind if you plan to disable this option. Then, of course, there's user experience. If a user um, is allowed to add, a, uh, add new content or comments, and they add a comment, and then uh, do a search, or maybe you use the search by doing a simple list, then they will wonder, why isn't my content or comment showing up, if you um, would disable this, uh, this option. On the other hand, um, there are performance issues in some cases, uh, for, especially when you're using Apache Solar, it is much, much uh, more performant to index large bunches of nodes at, this, at one time, so during cron runs, for example. And if you're indexing one at a time, this can really be a drain on performance for larger sites. For smaller sites, this won't really make any difference, usually. And then uh, the indexing, of course, takes some time, so it w might lead to longer um, load, uh, page load times when the user um, edits or creates a, new, a node, because then in the background it will have to index before the uh, next page can really be loaded. So um, to sum this up, it is usually a good idea to do this on small sites, especially if you're the only one um, editing content anyways. You can uh, yeah, just enable this, and unless you run into real problems with it, with the performance, then just keep it enabled. For larger sites, you'll really have to think about it, what the, um, what the effects will be on your site, and make a decision based on that. So um, to continue, this is just a small demo, so we keep this enabled. We save and edit. Now, uh, in the next step, we, we are selecting the fields we want to index. As, as said, this is also very similar to Drupal 7, although um, we have changes pl planned for this, just not uh, implemented at the moment. I'll come to this later. But here you have more or less the same, um, same interface as in Drupal 7, just with a uh, several data sources, so one for comments, content, and taxonomy term with their respective fields. So um, one improvement here is that you don't have to um, add the text, um, the body text 
as a related field before indexing it. I think that's uh, that's a UX plus because that's a lot of complaints we got for Drupal 7. And it's actually very very much easier um, internally in Drupal 8 to do. And likewise, we can um, we can index the the subject. Of course, we want to find that too. Um, the type I'm selecting here is actually pretty straightforward in most of the cases. You have, yeah, integers, decimals, dates, booleans. The only real difference here is full text or string. A string means uh, one, uh, really one keyword, one name, like um, the content type. This can ju just be a few different uh, strings. You want to just index them as is, as a single token. Whereas full text will be split into individual words, which can then be found. So for f in full text fields, you can really search for words that are containing the, them. For uh, for string fields, you can just filter: is this um, ha does the field have this value? And the boost just um, is a measure uh, a configuration for how important the field is. So the subject is eight times more important than the body field, and um, hits in this in the subject field will count more than in the body field. Here you have the new uh, related fields um, form. Now you can just um, enable here all the related fields you want to have for this data source and they will be added uh, above. Um, so for example, if we uh, would want more information about the user, we can update it here. And then we have the user. Okay, yeah, that's that's a that's a bug, um, or not really a bug. It's just um, a complication in a core that leads to this double step. We'll try to eliminate that, of course, still. But then you can um, index the users fields as well. If you, for example, want the user roles indexed with the um, comment, then the same for uh, for the con for content. Just indexing um, body and title for the moment, and again for the for taxonomy terms. So now we're saving this, and the last step, uh, as in Drupal Seven, is configuring the processors. And this again works um, uh, to a large extent as it did in Drupal Seven. You have different processors here. So aggregated fields can be used to add additional fields to the, to the index. Content access is a, a very important one I should also talk uh, shortly about. Um, what this does is automatically add uh, content access for notes and comments to the index because in, generally it, in general it's not really possible to do entity access on a generic level in Drupal. So most of the time when you create a search, it's your responsibility to make sure that only um, content that the, view, the user can actually view is being displayed. Um, but since notes and comments are of course the main um, use case here, uh, we implemented Drupal's own node access mechanism in the search API. So if your site is using that, you can just enable um, enable this uh, processor and everything will be taken care of automatically. And as mentioned before, index items immediately is important here to enable because otherwise the um, node access checks will use stale data and you'll run into problems. There are uh, other modules that don't n use node access, uh, Drupal's um, core node access system, so those will ha have to be handled different um, separately, and this, and also all other data sources. As far as they have some access control, you would have to take care of that yourself too. Um, back to the demo. So um, other other filters are um, there as before. Node status is also a method if you just never want to show unpublished nodes, 
then you can just use that too. Rendered item is if you want to include just everything that would be displayed on the node page, more or less, just node content, uh, HTML. If you just want to index that, you can just enable this and uh, search through that field because that will, um, that will of course also contain everything that should be found. Just take care that no field labels are included there or something. And also you cannot bo boost the title or other fields that way, so it's also a trade-off. Um, stop words are also um, practical to exclude common words from the index. One, something that's new now in Drupal 8 is that um, the processors, the stages in which the, pr which the processors operate are explicitly shown now and you can um, rearrange the processor order um, uh, specific to the different stages. So pre-processing index is before uh, items are being, being indexed. We first want to add uh, the aggregated fields then the context, content access information, and then uh, HTML filter, tokenizer, and well, ignore case can also go up there. But um, this uh, the um, default sorting will of course be um, still still refined to reflect what is uh, what would be the most sensible default. This isn't working um, completely at the moment. Preprocess query is for when you do a search query. At what what point will um, what will the different processors preprocess this query? So the um, the whole um, order should be more or less the same as here, as far as the processor uh, processors are the same. And then you can have the processor settings, uh, aggregated fields. Um, for, with aggregated fields, you can add new fields, and one um, one practical use for this is to have a sortable title, because now we have to index the title as a full text field, and especially, um, actually in Drupal 8 you can sort on full text fields, but you have the title field in three different fields because it's the subject for comments, it's the title for nodes, and it's the name for taxonomy terms. So there wouldn't be a, pra a practical way to sort on this field because it's really three different fields. But with aggregated fields, we can just combine this information into a single search API field. And that way, it, beca it becomes uh, much easier to sort on it then. The other field, the other processors are more self-explanatory. Um, HTML filters should, of course, all only work on the fields that actually contain HTML. Ignore case can work on all of those. Stop words too. This will only work on uh, full text fields. And the token uh, tokenizer settings are also okay. So we just save this. Then uh, we can quickly take a look at the fields list where um, the fields uh, these processes add will now be uh, displayed as well. Especially now there's um, there's a, a system in the search API to allow fields to be um, to be always enabled, so to be force enabled more or less, so that you cannot um, not index them really. Because of course, if you have an aggregated field, um, you always want to index it, so you cannot even um, change that here. Uh, same for example, the the, com uh, the content access processor uses the common status, and this will also be always indexed as long as the content access process is enabled. But now we just need to um, index the content with these uh, settings. which will just take a few moments. And then we're already um, ready to create a search with this um, ser server and index. The way we uh, create the search is of course with views. Um, with 
uh, views in core for Drupal 8 is of course clear that um, views will be the the primary way to create searches and um, yeah, it's the only way uh, included in the search API itself. So here we um, select the index we just created. We of course want to create a page with that. Um, rendered search API item just lets you use a view mode of the co of the nodes and comments to display the search results. So first off, we um, define these view modes that should be used for that. Uh, we want, of course, um, to have just a teaser for the nodes. The rest can stay the same. You might also want to just create new view modes for the search results to be um, able to better, better customize that. We add a, a full text search filter to be able to do full text search. We, of course, also expose it, so visitors can actually use it. And the uh, settings are also pretty self-explanatory, I think. The one that gives a lot of people trouble in 777, at least, is this one, which should, for 99% of cases, just remain at search keys. So if you're unsure, just don't touch this. You can also restrict the fields that are being searched. At the minimum, keyword length should be set to the same as as you uh, the um, you configured for the database backend, so that this will um, play well with each with each other, and the user will also see what's wrong if he doesn't um, doesn't enter to uh, um, doesn't enter words that are long enough. Uh, well, also practical, of course, is a result summary so that we see what's going on. And you might also, of course, want to add a add a no results behavior that just says, sorry, no results could be found for this search. But that's uh, normal uh, views um, tweaking, of course. So n now that it's already saved, we can we can already uh, view this page. And now we see just a list of all the content we have with um, comments. And if we, now, if we now insert one of the words that are contained, this is of course just all um, lorem ipsum uh, debugging content, then you get uh, results that only contain this. There are view results as we see here, and um, items that have Macto in the title, which has a higher boost, will come first here, or generally be ranked higher. Um, and of course, if we then use more terms, the results will be, um, will get uh, fewer and fewer. Um, Okay, then I, I'll also uh, showcase how to set up um, search with the solar module, which isn't uh, isn't as done at the moment as the dot database backend. So then there are more uh, kinks to flesh out yet, but basically it works. Um, it basically works. First, of course, you need to um, enable the solar search module, which provides the back, which provides the backend implementation for a search API to use with Apache Solar. H here we then just create a new server. Um, but before we do that, we of course have to um, we have to do two things actually. First off, once we have the module installed, we need to um, install also its dependency Solarium, which we do with Composer. So just go to the module directory, 
execute the statement, uh, this command, and then it will automatically install uh, Solarium in the Solar module for you, and which uh, the module requires to be working. And the other thing, okay, yeah, this seems to have worked fine. The other thing we have to do is um, actually start a solar server on our machine, which is also um, pretty easy. I've already downloaded the uh, uh, solar package from the website. 5.3.0 is, I think, the most recent one, or at least one of the most recent ones, and there are um, no known problems with um, even the latest versions, so you can really use any of them. Then we need a bit of configuration. We need to um, first make a Drupal directory um, for our server and a conf directory inside that Drupal directory for the configuration files. These configuration files just com uh, come packaged with the search by solar module in the solar conf um, directory and based on the solar major version. So we just copy all of these in here. Then, ah, oh, of course, yeah. Then we have to start the server too. Which now um, with uh, solar five, it, um, works with a single command. You just to um, bin solar, start, and will automatically start the solar server for you. So there's no um, need to use Java explicitly or install Tomcat on your server. This is now all pre-bundled in a sim single application. Now, now this works and just go to the core admin and create a new core. Named Drupal in our case. Um, as you saw earlier, I used Drupal for the directory name. So this um, solar server is now running with our um, custom configuration. So now we just need to um, tell the search API about it. Uh, again, just specify any name, then use the solar backend in this case. Most of the settings will already be um, the right ones for the um, normal installation. The only thing we have to adapt here is to add the to add our instance uh, directory name to the path. The rest is um, the rest is old bun stuff, which uh, we don't have to care about for a simple, especially for a simple test installation. One important thing to keep in mind here, though, is that when you install a solar server this way, um, everyone can access it, so you have to um, use some way of uh, restricting access to the solar server, otherwise anyone can add or uh, delete indexed items. So, um, but there is, uh, just go to the search by solar uh, handbook, which explains um, several ways of implementing um, access checks here. Anyways, we see um, the server was successfully saved and the solar server could be reached, so we uh, set it up correctly. No items have been indexed yet, and um, yeah, everything else seems to be fine too. So now we just need to move the um, index to the to the server, and we can um, use the search as before. Oh no, we first have to index, of course. Now cross your fingers, please. This never happened, nothing to see here. Oh, okay. Um, but in general, once this has been fixed, it should work, uh, it should st just um, work as before with the database back and not a very, um, not a very good presentation, I um, admit, but uh, believe me, it will work again. 
and it worked before. Okay, but that's, um, that's already it for the um, demonstration. Oh yeah, uh, I forgot that. But I mentioned most of this, so you can also, instead of self-installing Solar, you can of course also use a Solar Hoster. Just have to take care that the right config files are used. Uh, security concerns I, uh, me I mentioned, and yeah. yeah Drupal.org, Handbook, all this, um, this access uh, checks are explained, how to set them up with Solar 4 or 5 or 3, I guess. And yeah, just um, to go quickly, uh, over um, some of the planned further changes. I already uh, shortly mentioned the simplified UI. Um, so this is something we really want to tackle still, um, just after all the basic framework stuff has been finished, because um, the user interface, of course, caused, caused a, lot of, um, a lot of problems, for, especially for newer users, because most of it is uh, a lot of it is unclear for newer users and not very well explained and just maybe even in the wrong mindset for, uh, for most of the users. So um, what we want to do for one thing is just have a more views like um, user interface for, for the fields t uh, tab, or at least we're planning to do that, that's the current idea. So that you just uh, add new fields the way you would infuse and not have this huge table which can uh, really get out of hand if you for larger sites, as I'm sure has happened to some of you in Drupal 7. And we also plan to have a wizard uh, for easy search creation where you just click, after you install the module, just click, okay, I want to set up a search. Then you just enter a few basic things and the wizard takes care of all the rest basically applying um, sensible defaults, saying, okay, you probably, if you're indexing nodes, you probably want to have these um, fields available, index this way, and the search with this and this. This is um, also just, an, just a plan or idea at the moment, but we definitely want to do something like that because, um, yeah, set up for um, new users or inexperienced users is really a problem in Drupal 7 and maybe we'll also backport some of it. But as you saw, um, the search by database defaults module already does something like this, having um, enabling to, uh, enab just, enab just enabling the module, you'll have um, a basic setup. It's just not very flexible because it's all pre-configured. So if you're using different fields on the nodes or something, then this will all fall apart and so, this is just the first step, but we, um, we definitely want to improve there. And then there are really um, not many other large changes planned. Some of the smallest changes are for indexing performance um, and especially initial setup performance because for um, huge sites with uh, something like a million no nodes, um, in Drupal 7 it's uh, it sometimes already happened that not that it's made problems when creating the index to get all these um, items tracked, and the problem will be even worse for Drupal 8 because now you have all of the nodes in different languages or pot potentially they can be, and you have to check for that, and you have different data sources of course, so uh, also for all of the million nodes maybe more, even more comments and. So that's something we'll have to uh, deal with still. Um, one thing that if we can uh, implement it correctly, as in uh, Drupal core, um, we, which, have, uh, which has really been focused on caching lately and providing even to an uh, authenticated user a very uh, smooth experience through caching, if we can um, implement proper caching for a search API, this would also be a huge benefit, of course. Uh, at least for some th for some sites, I guess, or for the most basic, uh, most common, um, most common uh, pages. And one other thing is um, search operators. So, uh, for example, there isn't a between operator in the search API in Triple Seven. So you cannot say I want to have this value between be between one and three or do. Um, 
So even do, maybe do something like uh, begins with search for strings. So um, some of these operators will be added and also be made, made available in views. And uh, speaking of views, um, that's, uh, as you might have seen, far from finished at the moment. So um, we have basic support for um, uh, viewing the rendered items and having a full text filter, but uh, really not much else. So this will be, once the basic frame framework is done, the next step, of course, to enable uh, users to create uh, views actually using all of this uh, functionality, the old one and the new. Then uh, there is, of course, facets. Um, there was an effort started in, uh, at the Dev Days Montpellier in uh, March, I, th I think. And so uh, the Facets API module port is on the way. It's still a long way from um, being done, but there will very um, surely be progress here on that as well. And uh, the autocomplete and saved searches modules for the search API will also definitely be ported, but also um, uh, at least if, not, if no one else um, gets to it, I plan to do this after the search API itself is stable because A, that's the prior priority, and B, otherwise these modules would, might still implement um, stuff based on uh, shaky, um, shaky um, basis, so it's uh, better to first get the search API itself stable. Uh, for the other modules, um, I expect this will also be ported. Attachments already has a port. And um, yeah, just two modules that at least I uh, don't plan to port are the multi-index searches module because with the new um, functionality of creating an index for different types of uh, entities at once, this will be pretty useless, I hope, and it didn't work uh, that well anyways. So that will almost certainly not be ported. And the pages modules, since uh, views is now in core, I guess the um, adding, uh, using search views will just be the, um, the primary way to create searches and it won't, it won't be worth it to port the pages module which, which um, works around that. But if anyone wants to port it, that's of course um, also fine by me. Okay, so this was my presentation. Thank you very much. Are there any questions? Yes. Okay, uh, the question was about the Apache Solar module. Um, I thought, I uh, um, didn't mention this, but I thought it was already um, pretty known. The Apache Solar module won't be ported to Drupal 8. It, is, it was already merged more or less with the Search API Solar module and we are working to make sure that um, the new Search API Solar module for Drupal 8 will support all the use cases uh, that the Apache Solar module supported in Drupal 7 so that everyone has a um, good up update path and yeah, that's, that's been um, decided already. Other questions? Yes? Um, the question was in the, from the processors tab why the um, pr list uh, of pr for preprocessed index, preprocessed query, and postprocessed query were different. The processor lists. This is because um, the processors work at different stages, and this list, um, this form really doesn't only uh, allow you to configure the order, but also shows you which processor works on which stage. So the um, aggregated fields processor only adds a field and it only does that at index time because there's nothing to do at search time. So it is only listed in the first of the three columns, preprocess index. Um, things like the tokenizer, which splits um, the, the content to individual words, this has to work at indexing, but also when doing a search because you have to uh, split the search keys the same way. 
On the other hand, when post-processing the query, only a little has to be done. You can do highlighting. So the highlight processor is uh, active in this uh, at this stage, and you can uh, the stop words processor just adds the stop words it filled it out to the result so that they can be displayed. But other than that, um, most of the other processors don't have to do anything at this stage. So this is really um, a kind of introspection into what the processes are doing, something that was actually also requested for Drupal 7 just to be, uh, just uh, to have it more clear what the processes are actually doing. Other questions? Yes? Um, you mean the you you mean the config system in uh, in Drupal eight? So the question is whether the search by plays nicely with the new um, config system in Drupal eight, and the answer is yes. Um, Drupal eight comes with a yeah very great system for creating um, entities based on configuration, and the search by uses this for both indexes and servers. So both uh, so every index or server you create will actually be a single configuration object and can um, easily be um, exported and imported on a different site or export this part of the whole configuration. And yeah, it's of course, in a Drupal 7 there were, was a lot of, uh, there were a lot of pains with using features with the search API, especially with the database backend. And of course now that um, this, uh, this functionality is in Drupal core, we also want to sh ensure that this um, this doesn't happen again and this really works smoothly to um, yeah uh, e e export and import configuration and servers or indexes any other questions yes I uh, know this is this is actually only a uh, uh, just a text field where you have to where you can enter them. It's so here you have just have a list of the of all the stop words. It's of course not the um, in Drupal seven there was actually the the alternative to either use a file or this text field. So maybe that will be added but added later. But basically you, it, it, the idea is to have this configuration in the index itself also for, the conf for um, better configuration support. Yes. Um, the question was whether thing things like um, stop words would be multi, would, uh, if there are plans to make this multilingual. That's a good question, yeah. <laughs> Um, basically, we uh, we are trying to do a much better job at um, supporting multilingual sites in Drupal 7. Also, because again, Core has has uh, made great improvements in that area, and what Core does, the Search API should of course support too. So, um, for the um, translated entities actually are now indexed separately. So these uh, ver will work very smoothly in most cases already. Um, regarding um, language specific configuration, we are not that far, uh, unfortunately, so there are not no multilingual stop words and I, I don't even think that this has been noticed, but so if, if you want, please create an issue for that and we'll see. Um, it's a really good idea, of course, because um, language independent stop words are basically useless for multilingual sites. So yeah, we should definitely have that. And uh, we'll also try to bake better um, multilingual support into, so into the solar module itself. So that this will also work better out of the box or at least work smoothly with uh, an additional module. Thomas? Yes? May I um, answer this question as well? Oh, oh of course, yeah. Hi. Uh, yeah, just want to inform you that we uh, started porting the Apache Solar multilingual module to Search API and Drupal 8. Yeah, and there's almost already a working prototype. Yeah, and maybe that's the answer for multilingual stop words, handling all the languages, and stuff like that. 
yeah, it's still a lot of work to do, but we are uh, already started with that. Yeah, so there's an additional module for this. Yeah. Excellent, yeah. So yeah, this, for solar that's the module, but of course we should also support it in the uh, stoppage processor if you're using the database back and so still valid, but of course very good that this already exists. Yes. So the, the question is about um, which uh, processes basically solar can replace. And the answer is almost all of them. So if you're using solar, you should definitely um, disable ignore case, stop words, and tokenizer, because they will just uh, mark things up and keep solar from doing what it uh, does. And it does, of course, much better than we can do it. So um, especially tokenizer can uh, lead to a really really bad results. HTML filter, on the other hand, is useful because Solar at the moment cannot know if a field contains HTML or not. I'm actually thinking about maybe having a different type for that, so full text and full text HTML, so that um, the server is aware of that and can take of that, uh, care of that as well. But otherwise, just have the HTML filter enabled, and of course, things like aggregated fields and content access, and, but if you enable the HTML filter, you should also remove all the tag boosts because this is also something that won't work with Solar. But other than that, uh, yeah, most of the most of the processes really uh, won't work well with uh, with Solar. So really, all of the, those that that change what is being indexed, not add something new like rendered item or aggregated fields, but all of these that, um, yeah. Change the change the content on the way. Any more questions? Yes. Uh, Elastic. The question was about Elastic Search in Drupal 8. Uh, as far as I'm aware, I'm I fear I'm I'm not uh, using Elastic Search, so I'm not very familiar with uh, how well uh, all the modules are working. But one of the modules has already been ported to Drupal 8 last year in the Google Summer of Code, but I don't know what the, um, what happened further there, if it's currently working or to what part is, is, it's working, but I'm pretty sure that uh, that it w uh, at least the um, Elasticsearch client module will be ported. I think that's the most active at the moment. But as said, I, I'm really not an expert. I'm not working with the... Um, the people um, maintaining these modules, so I'm the wrong per person to ask, really. Other questions? Okay, then, thank you very much.